Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today we're going to cover the history of another company in the Star Citizen universe, but this one being one that we've all seen from playing the game in the verse, and that's Dumper's Depot. Now, Dumpers was founded by a man by the name of Ezekiel Chikamoto, uh, who actually went by the alias of Burner Zeke. Now, Zeke was born in Fujin City in 2875 to a fairly standard middle-class family. He ended up being the youngest child with two older siblings. Um, their family was always on a tight budget to maintain their lifestyle in what was an extremely expensive city, um, which is where you start to see a little bit of Zeke's mentality setting in from a very early age. Now, wearing hand-me-down clothing and toys was always the norm for him, but instead of playing with these toys, you'd normally see Zeke kind of playing with appliances that the family had in their home. So he obviously had the drive, but did lack some of the knowledge, which became a little bit evident when he tried to customize their cleaning unit, which left their apartment covered in dust. While a good attempt, it also got him a ban from his mother on tinkering with their appliances anymore. Now that drive and innate skill set, though, was what allowed him to receive a full scholarship to a great private school in the city, um, which would help kind of propel him to where he was later in life. That being said, though, he did find some trouble in classes, specifically from other kids that were a little bit more well-off, who kind of teased him for having older technology and uniforms that have been pre-loved. Basically, he wasn't really accepted amongst his classmates based on his economic status. Now, wanting to fit in really badly, though, he did plead with his parents to get him a new data pad, but they kind of gave that standard parental response of, you know, we can't really afford it right now, you could get a job and pay for it yourself if you need it so badly. Now, he did witness something shortly after, though, that would kind of help shape his view on things. Uh, a classmate tossed his malfunctioning data pad in the trash, just didn't do anything. You know, Zeke was basically amazed and shocked just seeing how little value his mate had in the equipment that he just flippantly tossed away. So he ended up grabbing it, spent some of the weekend fixing it, and then sold his old pad um, for some extra credits to buy more tools. Zeke then took it upon himself to really tell all of his classmates that he'd buy it from them regardless of their condition. And word spread really quickly. Um, he would go in, he'd fix it um, if he could, and then he would sell it to a reseller. Or he would end up going, kind of going and saving the parts um, from the ones that were a little bit too far gone to save. And they would use them to fix other devices later on. Now it didn't take long before his bedroom started to fill up with gadgets and the mess really started to kind of flood into other parts of the apartment as well. And while they loved his passion and drive, um, the mess was just a little bit too much for his parents to handle, so they eventually required him to clean it up and get rid of all of his stuff. So he took his parts to the shop and really kind of tried to sell everything, but he just wasn't getting the amount of credits he thought he should, you know, should get. It wasn't what he felt was a fair price. And during this transaction, though, he did figure out why. Well, these shops were down by the docks, and the workers there are typically going to be pretty poor. So while his classmates saw him as being poor, the dock workers there saw him actually as being better off than them, and they weren't really willing to give him more than what they felt was fair to a rich kid, quote-unquote. So this was an eye-opening moment for Zeke, and it was time for him to kind of become something else again. And on his next visit, Zeke showed up in some old clothing. He created an odd fake accent, kind of had a little bit of a kind of a rough attitude to him, uh, which ended up getting him a lot more credits on his sales, and thus his new persona, Burner Zeke, was born. Now, once he finished up his schooling and it was time for university, he actually ended up surprising his parents by turning down scholarship offers to these schools because he wanted to work on his scrap business. And he used the savings that he had built up for school to open a small storefront uh, near his old school, naming it Dumper's Depot, where he would end up working full time. Now, in 2894, he officially had the store up and running, but Dumper's Depot was just one of many stores with that same business model, so business was far from booming. And that led Zeke to another change. He had the self-awareness to realize his store was doing the same things that the other stores were doing, even though they, he kind of hated some of the process, you know, as far as like waiting and buying items and appraising them. You know, instead, it was time for Zeke to say to himself that Dumper's would make things easy and simple. You know, he would base prices on commonplace items, uh, and then he would have variable prices based on their condition. He would also end up doing bulk buys, which made the process a lot faster for the customers. Now, some people ended up finding out that they would make a little bit less, but they had their time back, which some people felt was very valuable. Others found that they actually made a little bit more doing the bulk buys, but Zeke didn't really care because he knew that he could fix and sell the items to still come out on top. He still needed more, though. Um, taking out a large loan would get him uh, advertising on the spectrum. And to save a little bit more money, he ended up starring in the commercials himself um, with what became his new famous motto, everything is valuable to someone. Now, I think that message is what really resonated. And along with the improved business model, business started to boom, necessitating him to bring on extra hands to help get repairs done and sorting through all the bulk purchases. 
Within a year, he ended up doubling his staff size again, and their reputation grew enough that he was able to start getting contracts with construction and refining companies for supplies, which brought in a nice and large steady flow of income. Now, while other stores really kind of saw this and were like, hey, we should probably try and replicate this business model, um, Dumper's Depot had already became very well established and others had a hard time competing with that model and with Zeke specifically based on his interesting personality. The real expansion started once Zeke's first employee, uh, Dayton Faro, had to move back home um, based to, on a family emergency and home was a different world. Um, and he asked Zeke if Zeke had ever considered opening a second location, which, you know, Dayton could do on YAR for him. Now, Zeke hadn't really trusted um, or really even thought about that very much, but he did trust Dayton um, enough so that he actually agreed to allow Dayton to update and create another store on YAR as long as he kept the same name and the same business model. And that would be the first of many franchises to open. Um, Zeke put together the training material for the franchisees himself, um, you know, for all of the new stores, but he did empower his employees to run their stores based on decisions driven by their instincts. Now, he obviously knows how to run this business, but being on a different planet, they'd be better off making those day-to-day -day decisions on their own. And that's what a lot of people say is the real strength of Dumper's Depot, because while you are certainly a franchisee of the company, you're essentially running your own business and calling your own shots. So um, people there are really vested in making things work. Dumper's Depot can be found all over the verse. It's a common site on planets and on stations and is a great place for players to buy components uh, for their ships. And I'm sure eventually we'll see it being a good place to sell scrap once we get that gameplay in place. Um, and then we're also going to probably see smaller and more diverse items being uh, bought and sold there. So that's basically your background on Dumper's Depot. Uh, if you guys have questions about any of this, please let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate you all watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.